that that picture. Because mm. I've seen quite a few of your works and that those clouds are quite different to what you normally have. Those clouds I've noticed they were slightly different shape. Is that you were really wanting that clip on the on the cloud um, that was that the small version of that was the rat painting. Was the real <laughs> that was the real shocking rat painting and the rat ran all around the figure. Which actually was quite lovely because I kind of liked to integrate the figure into the landscape yeah. and the rat kind of knew. An artistic rat. So you didn't do the cloud or you did it? Oh, they, they, they went over the clouds as well and I, I looked at the painting and I thought, oh, I'll fix it up when I get home, maybe. But I gave it a bit of a whack, you know, I whacked a bit of stuff on it just in Castle Point. Mm -hmm. And when I got back, I really loved it. So I sort of was trying to emulate the clouds in the larger one. Well, the clouds um, actually that shape, because you know, like, you're, oh, sort you're, of, yeah. you're quite sort of, you know, you're quite sort of like getting there and get stuff a bit, which is like what I like. I like that. Yeah, it was, there, was a bit of, there was a bit of sort of rain and stuff. I mean, the thing I liked about that was that they had that sea mist, which mm -hmm. I think um, yeah. it's probably... But look, you know, the big one was different than the small one. And, um, the sky yeah. behind those clouds you know, is very clear, isn't it? It's just, a, just blue. Yeah. And the clouds are just in, in front of the sky in that particular painting. And that's all really expensive cobalt yeah, yeah. blue. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love those expensive colours based on And the other colour that was discovered was cobalt... Um, violet. No, the cobalt violet and the t cobalt turquoise. Is it the cobalt turquoise line? Yeah. Everybody ordered turquoise. We yeah. And <laughs> I think that I know, the, the, the colour of the water, what colour would you have described yeah. the water? Well, I managed to get from um, Parker's a couple of tubes of your, I think it's manganese blue, which yeah. you can't get anymore. Yeah. And he tracks some yeah. down, and so I bought two tubes, but I was scared to use them because <laughs> they're so rare now. Yeah. <laughs> but they're a bit lovely. But the water was much more opaque, wasn't it? It doesn't have that, um, that, 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 that transparency that you may see with our water here. It just, the castle point water seemed like with that sea mist in that. It's very dense, the water. Yeah. It's a solid one. Yeah. I thought it was interesting when we went to Castle Point because um, I kind of chose the location. So we were talking, Steve and me were talking about where would we go, um, and I chose two locations. I chose Castle Point because I'd been there um, and I knew someone that had a place there, and I thought logistically that would work out. Um, and then I chose Ruapehu because it was somewhere I wanted to go. I'd driven <laughs> past it um, on the desert road. I don't know if you've been to New Zealand, but you see. These mountains are, are, are insane and beautiful. So I really was keen to go there, so that was where we went. But I thought it was really interesting because when we got to Castle Point, there's a beautiful headland and then there's that wacky kind of mountain, isn't there? Yeah, sort of like that. yeah whatever they called it. And um, it seemed to me on the first few days that everyone was avoiding the sea, that everybody was turning their backs to yeah. the sea, like you had Iris. Peter went up, you know, like, no, no, go inland, inland, inland. And yet the paintings don't reflect that as much. Yeah, but but the, the, there was a sense of, um, <laughs> that was my observation, that the, all the Australian artists kind of went, nah, you know, don't want, to have, don't want to know about that. Although the paintings don't reflect that because a lot of them have got that beautiful big monolithic shape. Can you want to describe Shona's practice? Because she works from the postcards and the photographs that are... Yeah, Shona's work. Yeah, you know. She was an ex student, she went over to uh, France and Germany. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that is one. Yeah. Um, and she got, she, she collected up all the metro tickets and she started painting on those. Mm -hmm. And then so she then she sort of developed um, getting those free postcards and painting on them. So it, it's, she sort of got this uh, kind of relationship between the, the photograph and the, um, and the painting, the postcards. And, painting on them. So it, it's she's sort of got this uh, kind of relationship between the, the photograph and the um, and the painting. But I noticed with some of these they were that, that one was a postcard and she did uh, I think it was four or I think she did about six or so of them. But I noticed she's done a suite where she actually used photographs she'd taken, which are beautiful, beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. But one thing you'll also notice if you look closely and it's something you've got to be really careful with is she sandwiched them all um, with bubble wrap and sent them back here and they were all kind of got bubble wrap imprints oh. so don't do that then. But look I think photography is a, a major part of, of um, 
landscape painting. And I, I think, you know, like I, uh, I have a friend, and we went on a trip, uh, on another trip, uh, and he just took a camera. And um, John McDonald gave him a hard time in, a, in an article saying, well, you know, we all worked away painting and he just took a camera. But that's his part of his practice. And um, look, a lot of people take photographs. I take, I took photographs. I didn't work off them much because I didn't really have to, but um, they're always there. People use them. I think people are always a bit embarrassed to say, you know, I, I, you know, I use photographs, but we all use photographs. And, um, I think that the thing to be thinking about is that they don't become a trap. You're not actually, you know, doing a painting of a photograph. You're wanting them, as Steve said, to be an aid to your memory. Yeah, they're just a memory. It's yeah. also, in, in the way that um, everything shifts when you're there, a photograph will also capture things that you're really not aware you're looking at. You know, mm -hmm. I'll use, I use photographs, and I'll, I can study a photograph and find a little bit of detail, and it's kind of just like a sign, a, a road sign or something. It just will give me a way to kind of stop it. Give some, I'm looking for some answer on what to do in a particular spot, and I might, might not even really be there with the photograph, but it's enough of a key to go, oh, you better do it, and that will lead on to what I'm doing. So I use them quite a lot. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people painting, you know, doing a lot of artwork, and it's whatever it makes a really fantastic image at the end. I mean, you can use photos or not use photos, and it could be a dog of work. And you know, you're, you're teaching, the, young, the young kids who you're teaching, it's whatever gets them over the line and makes a really fantastic living piece of work. I think one of the things that we're going to talk about today later on is the fact that um, the teachers are often compelled to use photographs, whether we like it or not. Is that, because we can't get the excursions to go out and have that lived experience, we can't take them up to, although it's probably a great idea, isn't it, to take them to New Zealand. Um, but they're not going to be able to get a sense of that unless we provide some stimulus material for them. As, and, they're never going to have that authenticity, I suppose, but trying to make it as real and as lived as possible. I mean, the best idea when you're te teaching it's is better to turn them upside down and keep it. There's all sorts of ways. I mean, the best example for me is the Archibald Prize, which, you know, uh, and you see these TV shows on painting portraits and everything, and, you know, they do these, make a big thing of doing all this painting. And then you know take photos. And they, what do they do? They take they do portraits of the photos. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, um, uh, there's obvious reasons from doing. It. I do a lot of portraits and, and don't use photos. I don't do. But what you get is you get people looking pretty grim because you can't hold a smile or you can't get a um, you know can't the spontaneity. And in a way, it's the same as landscape painting. But in attempting to do that, I reckon you can this can be something fantastic. You know, the fact that trying desperately to capture that sense of movement, sense of change. A photograph click, you know, it makes it, you know, it certainly makes things easier in some ways. So I think it is a matter of what Steve says, if you, you, whatever, you, whatever um, goes. But I do think there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of people pretend they use photography less than they do. They use it a lot more than they do. And I think you'll see that in the Archibald Price, that pretty much all of them are based on photos. Very, very few that are not. Um, particularly more nowadays than even 10 years ago. Yeah. You, can, you can see the style changing, the <coughs> type of uh, images that they're picking and that the audience get used, gets used to. Mm -hmm. And that everything has to be blown up and that they're, they're not sure about the scale. You know, scale's quite an important thing. In, not anymore in, though. Yeah, well, it's changed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing actually. Yeah. 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 I think we've got a question up the back. Yeah, this will have to be the last question for the session. Just wondering if the figures in that one uh, reference photographs. No, actually, that's my brother comes in and I work with um, <laughs> drawings, and they end up just changing his body shape and heads here, there, left, right, and centre. So it yeah, doesn't look good. much like his brother, I've got to say. Yeah, no. <laughs> so it, I, it comes from knowledge. I've worked uh, at art school, you know, uh, four or five years, and working from the figure day in day out, and that's all I do. So you tend to make up things, and um, you just know the anatomy. I've worked, you know, with dead bodies and all that sort of stuff. So you just know where muscles are, and a lot of it just comes from memory and some, that's why sometimes some things look a little bit dodgy or like that for example I thought I hit an arm there should really that elbow's quite tucked in um, on the left of that fellow but I just thought it looked nice you know? <laughs> and then people don't really pick that up um, mm -hmm. you just got to know when to use it and when not to use it so there's parts which aren't anatomically correct but that makes it a feature yeah, in the end I could be as correct as anything and be a real boring picture so I think very often artists use things for purposes of their very own you know I mean,